in all of my careers, I've always been that person that just figures things out so that people can do the same job faster with the same success. So I like to stumble and I like to boil it down into a system so that people can have that same success, but just faster. So that's why I titled SOS, because it is system of success. And that's one of the key things that I've done in my business is set up a system surrounding around pretty much any activity that anyone working with me need would need to do that they can plug into a system and make it more plug and play. My name is Christine Dwyer and I help entrepreneurs, people who are working for themselves, but also more so in network marketing. So that's where my background has been. So for the past 15 years, I've been working as an independent consultant and I was the person that was responsible for Shalene Johnson's company, Powder Blue Production, with the livelihood of her company because I was the person responsible for the growth and the training and the success of her presenters. So they were called area promotions directors. And there there was about 60 of them at a time, so we'd constantly have a rolling cycle of them. But I worked for her as a national promotions director for 11 years from 2000 to 2011. So I was able to really nail down exactly what works, but mostly what works with people who are really insanely busy, who have big goals that they want to achieve, but they just don't know how to do things for themselves because they're used to working for other people as well as how to manage time and all of that. So I was really able to narrow this down over the whole course of the time and this is some of the stuff that I'm going to be teaching you guys as well as also in the past seven years, I myself buckled down and did something I said I was never, ever, ever going to do. I will never do this. And seven years ago, I did this. And seven years ago, I joined a network marketing business, so MLM, multi-level marketing company. And so that's what I do. That has been what has made me create the life of my dreams. Sorry to say, even though the amazing life that I had and I loved the job working for Shalene, I said, no matter how rich I get, I will never quit this job, but I had to quit the job because obviously some things were suffering. So I had to quit that job, but that job was never going to make me rich. It only made me rich in helping so many people and of course working for people that I love and uh, really helping people just change their life in a different capacity. So that's kind of my background, but for the past seven years working in network marketing, I've just moved all the skills that I've ever done in all of my careers, even when I was an x-ray tech, even when I was working applications, training people in medical equipment, I used all those skills. And that's exactly what you guys will do. You've already got skills. It's just transferring them to a different application. And I moved them over into network marketing and I had to start from the ground zero. So when I started, I personally don't have a coach or a mentor. So for the business that I'm in, I don't have anyone to go to. I had to figure it out for myself. And when I started, I was five months pregnant. I had a one and a half year old son. I still had the full-time job for Shalene and I had three part-time jobs and my husband worked about um, an hour away. So he was gone for 12 hours a day at a time. That's how I started as an entrepreneur in network marketing and I had to figure it out. And in my first year, so when my daughter turned one, so she was in my belly at five months, and when she came out in my first year and a half of the business, I achieved the highest in the company that no one had ever achieved before, which is their top rank. And I was the first person in the company to ever achieve that. And it was because of all the skill sets that I've learned, not just what I'm going to teach you tonight, but um, a lot of other things as well that I can help share with you in the future as well. So hopefully some of the stuff will be able to kind of pique your interest to stay tuned. And I've got a lot of training that I love to teach. So if you go to my youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer, I've got a ton over there. Just search around. You're going to find a ton. But in the course of this business, I, of course, have been able to help many people become six-figure earners as well as seven and multi-seven-figure earners in this business in less than seven years. So it's been a pretty amazing ride, and I'm thankful, of course, to have the opportunity to help so many people. Think of your own habits. So for instance, if you had that choice that you were either going to have someone say, well, we've got the blueprint of what... 10 other people have done in your same position and they followed the blueprint and they were immediately successful and they actually superseded the person who created it. We've got that that you can follow, but if you want, you can go and try to create your own system and, and figure it out yourself and see if that works. Which one would you choose? Follow the one that works already or create your own system? So the majority of you are saying that you would follow the blueprint. So 
I know many of you guys are very creative and that you want to have your own spin and your own interpretation as well as be that person that created something that people are following for insane success. Have at it. All I'm going to say is have at it, but I'm going to tell you a little secret of that's in this industry. Just make sure you don't tell anyone on the scope. Only 155 of you guys need to know this. Here's the secret. Everything that has been done in network marketing or own business success, it's been done before. Someone's already created a system for it. So why do you got to reinvent the wheel? It's kind of dumb. It's a waste of your time. Here, I'm going to tell you what to do. So I've got kind of two directions that we're going to be talking about. I'm going to tell you what I really focus on for creating for system of success, but also why? Why? Because I always think that you have to have an understanding. So I used to do trainings in New York. So I used to live in upstate New York and I used to certify people for group fitness. And there's certain cities that you knew you just would not schedule events for certifications to hold because those cities had the reputation that they did not want to do anyone else's stuff. They want to just do their own thing. So I'm not going to lie here. Okay. So I did Chris, or Christine, Shaleen's formats, Turbo Kick, which is a kickboxing format. And I lived in upstate New York and certain cities, I can easily get a, a training to go because so many instructors were so burned out from figuring out what to do. And that was actually me. I was that person that prided myself on having the best music and the best moves and all the instructors come and take my class because I'm the best. But I was spending so much money. I was constantly searching for new music, new moves, new ideas that I was like, I am not going to do a trademark format like Turbo Kick. That is going to make me be not myself. I'm just going to be another like Stepford wise. And I was so against it. And I honestly only went to California for the training because I wanted to be fitness famous. And I saw this as a launching pad. I didn't even really like Turbo Kick prior to going. And so when I went, I of course saw how wrong I was and that it's not that I'm following a system and forgetting who I am. I'm following a template and my interpretation and delivery on it is me. And that was the difference. So honestly, to tell you which city was one of the hardest cities, there was actually a couple of them. Three cities were some of the hardest ones. The hardest cities to get a training to go where people will plug it into a trademark format. The number one hardest city was New York City. Why? Because everyone down in New York City wants to be famous. They want to make up their own workout and be discovered to have their own workout line. So they're never going to teach somebody else's workout. They're all making up their own class to try to be discovered. So to hold a training down there was quite impossible because everybody was like an actor down there. They all wanted to like work their butts off to try to be discovered in their own unique thing. But again, here's another fitness industry. It's super ridiculously rare to be an instructor and be discovered to be famous. Like that's kind of really silly, rare. So here they are struggling, making it so hard for themselves to create something every week to deliver to their people when there are proven systems that work. So that's kind of what it is. And it was also Washington DC, Philadelphia was another one. They were just really, really hard to do. So that's something to think about with your own self. So some of you guys said that you would prefer to make your own and Go for it. I'm not saying not to, but I'm going to give you some ideas of some food for thought on that. So if there's a system that people created and 10 people followed it and they had a blueprint for success like faster than anything, why would you not at least give that a shot to get yourself going and understand the path that you should be going and figure out what you need to focus on or where you can tweak? So that's kind of it. I'm a person that likes to follow the rules. So for instance, uh, many of you guys who were on my scope this morning knows that I nursed two of my kids and I'm a rule follower. So I had two C-sections and in the books it says, do not work out for eight weeks post C-section. Check, I will not work out for eight weeks because I didn't want to risk tearing my uh, body so I'd have to be out more. So I waited eight weeks. I follow the rules because I want the expected result. Same thing with nursing. I nursed each kid for 12 months. I followed the rules because I wanted the expected result. Whatever that result was supposed to be, that was just what the word said to do. And for all programs that I like to test out, when my company comes out with something new, I will follow it how they designed it to see what the expected result is. But I then will make it my own. 
So if you are struggling first to figure out what to do, follow what's already in place at least once so you have a foundation and then tweak and make it your own. That's a critical step because why should you try to make it so difficult for yourself to be successful by creating something all brand new all by yourself? Just follow what people are doing for success. That's it. So my secret of success is laying the foundation. So now let's go and talk about that. What are we talking about? Taking the stairs? <laughs> what do you guys talk about? So what do you think? So does that make sense to you? Like, let me know if, if that makes sense with following at least a framework that you are not locked into, but you still have your own interpretation. Here's the thing. So I'm from the Northeast, of course. There's concrete basements in the Northeast. We've got basements there. I live in Texas now. There's no basements here. So a lot of the times when I'm seeing new entrepreneurs, so I run a 30-day business boot camp, and people they like scrape their way to get into this boot camp. And I've been running it now for three to four years. And I can be kind of a jerk with it because the rules are really hard. They're really hard to be in it because I make them that hard. Because if I make it too easy, then people will not follow through. It has to be a boot camp. And if I make it uh, challenging, they will commit and follow through and have the expected result. What I've discovered is that so many times people are trying to be like a dog with shiny things, constantly trying something new because somebody else is doing something else, but they're not focusing on the core principle, wrapping a system around the core foundation of what their business has to be. So if we look at a house, so no matter where you are here in Texas, I'm on a concrete slab, but up in New York, we were in a concrete basement. If we take the concrete out and we build a house just on grass, how strong is that house going to be? So let's build a two-story house and we're, we have multiple rooms. So if we look at the house, the living room is one activity in your business. The kitchen is another form of activity in your business, like sponsoring. One of the bedrooms is training the people in your business. Another one is creating content for your business. So each room is like a different activity in your business. If you build your house on grass, sure, it'll work. It's good. It's, it's going to do the job, right? But how, how long? How long and how strong? But now if you put that same house on a concrete foundation, how long and how strong will that house stay? That's the key that if you just build a foundation around core activities in your business, your business will grow faster. And to give you another example before I go into some activities that you can be building them on, here's the example. So when I worked with Shalene Johnson's company with the 60 plus presenters, the challenge was these presenters are not employees. They're independent contractors. They have a life. They've got kids. They've got spouses. They've got jobs. They're running all the time with their head cut off and they're trying to make this little side business thing blow up and work. So they would constantly email me any time of the night, call me any time of the night because they found a brief moment in their day that they could focus on this work to get it done. But for me, I couldn't just be available 24-7 much like you. Can you be available 24-7? And if you are saying yes, I hope you go watch my scope about that. And I did do one. It's on youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer. If you're leaving yourself open door, you are setting yourself up for pain. Pain where you hate your business. You are very angry against the people that work with you. You are short with your spouse. So you have to protect your time and you have to allow them to thrive when you're not available. So one of the key foundations that I did in that business was I put together, and I'm not saying you have to, this is what I did. I put together what we called the area promotions director's manual. And basically every year I just kept tweaking and building that manual for every action and activity that person would need to do in their business. They could easily just open up the manual and go to the page that says, you want to book an event? Follow these steps. You want to promote your event? Follow these steps. 
And I did that so that when they were up at two in the morning, they could get their answers. And that was the, one of the biggest reasons why that company thrived with the presenters, because there was always something for them to plug into to be able to get immediate answers to do the work when they needed to do. So um, Al asked, was that overwhelming for them? I think that's what your question was. It started to fade out. It, it was. It's always overwhelming for someone doing something brand new. But the, the anchor is that there is an anchor. So it's only overwhelming if there's nothing for people to refer to. So if you have people in your organization or working alongside with you, so if they don't have something to plug into and they are searching all over for the information, that's overwhelming. Think about your own activity. Every, every company has an employee manual. We are really then thinking about if I at least have a foundation of where people can plug into to know what to do for that certain activity and just focus them there, that's going to be key. So now here's where you don't overwhelm them. To give you some understanding of how I see entrepreneurs being overwhelmed is because the person that's responsible to train them, eh, this terminology is normal for them. And what they've been doing in the business has been normal for them. So what they do is they come to the table with this new person on board and saying, here, read all these books, jump on these recorded calls, listen to this live call. Oh, and scope is hot right now. So get on scope and then go set up your website too. And then get out there and start running these groups where you want to get people together and start cheering them on. Do all of that activity. Oh, and then don't forget I want you to go out there and share the business with five people and then go make a list of names of a hundred people to share your business with. So you're like putting more homework and homework, homework, homework on the person. That to them is overwhelming. So let's boil it down. We have to think about what is the core activities of your business? How and what are you actually doing for your business? So, I mean, you guys are agreeing. This is, this is what is happening. Getting them to actually do the right thing is tough. I totally agree, Sheree. It's really about finding out what is the core activity. And we're going to go right into that right now. Overwhelming. I'm having a tough time sharing a streamlined process with your team. As much as I wish everybody would plug in, I have to just constantly keep putting it out there because your one message or your two messages, they just may not see. So just get on the regular habit of passing that information on for people. So that's it. It is a huge problem. I definitely agree, Sam, for sure. So, okay, so what do we look at now for what is the core activity for business? So it no, doesn't matter which business you're in. If you are building your own business, you still need to either sell a product, sell a service, or sell the idea that they can do this too as a rep with your company. So if we're looking at that as the core activity that is going to be able to build your business for income, then we have to wrap around a foundation for people to plug in to get started in those steps. Simple. Because, I'm sorry, it's not that important for your new teammates to get on the company's uh, weekly call. It's not that important right in the beginning. It's not. It's not that important for them to run off and go have a home party. It's not that important for them to hurry up and go share the business with people. It's not that important. I got to give you another analogy so I'm, I have you guys in the same mindset with me. Have, have any of you started a brand new job where you were nervous? Okay, so majority of you guys, of course, are saying because obviously that's a very common question. So I want to paint this picture for you. On those first days, when you walked in, you probably had an orientation, right? Or when you walked in, did the president of the company come down and say to you, um, I'm so glad you're on board. We've got our highest profile client here today, and I'm going to give that client over to you. It's completely up to you to take care of today, and if you lose this account, you're going to be fired. Did that happen? Did you get the most critical steps in that company's livelihood on your first days? What did, what did you do your first days? What did you do? Tell me what you did on your first days working a new job. Yeah, yeah. Learn the ropes, baby steps, totally. So why are you treating your own home business where you're responsible for someone else getting started in their new J-O-B with you different? 
we are bringing new entrepreneurs on and we're loading them up with stuff that we feel is second nature to us that they should be responsible for building the most successful business right out of the gate. But the thing is, is they don't even know where the bathroom is yet. They don't even know if they should be dialing nine to fax something yet. They don't know that stuff. When you first get in, you do the bare bones basics. You kind of reorganize your desk a little bit. You move the stapler again and you kind of like look around in the cubicle and you're kind of listening on some of the conversations and you're like, well, I'll, I'll just walk to the cafeteria again because I kind of don't know what to do today. And then you're just kind of talking to people and you're just walking around, maybe attend a meeting and you bring a notebook and you're like, I'm going to write stuff and there's nothing to write because you don't know what the heck's going on yet. That's how your first few weeks in the business is. Why is a home business any different? It's not. Get them acclimated. So bare bones basics, just get their website set up. What is the critical step that they need to do? That's all they need to do. So let's go into a little bit of where did I really focus on putting systems? All I would suggest you do because your business is going to be different than my business is write down the activity that grows someone's business. So for instance, in my business, it's running groups to keep people managed. We call them challenge groups. And so I have a system because my goal is this. When I have a new rep joining me in the business, I don't want them to think because they're already overwhelmed. They're scared. They don't want to fail. They don't want to lose that biggest client. So I don't want them to think. I want them just to plug and play on my system right now. I will hand over to you everything. And I actually keep my system very tight that they can't move forward in the system unless they've done the first activity right. Because I need it to be an expected result. I don't like people just check mark, let me get these tasks done because it needs to be an expected result. So when someone goes through that training, they're getting trained and they're processing the understanding of human nature and mentality and getting people marketing. I'm teaching them while they're in the process of each step, but they don't need to think. All they need to be is the robot that plugs and plays my stuff. I give it all to them every bit. But you know what? Once they've gone through my system, they're going to have success. They're going to feel confident. Now when they run their second one, they may run it the same again, just to make sure that they feel good about it. But then when they run again, they're going to be like, well, this time I want to do this with my challenge because I had fun doing this. That's when you tweak. So always get started, then tweak. Get started and tweak. And that's how it doesn't get boring because you're constantly then switching things up to make it your own. Much like, like when I was teaching Turbo Kick, I found Oh, I'm not a robot Stepford wife. I have a template. I have the music, but the way I teach is me. How I have fun with my people, how I connect with them, how I cue, how I do that move, how I break down the moves. That's me. I'm not doing it by the video because the video will never work in my class. The video is an idea. Always start with that idea and then you switch it out. So uh, do I have this written down somewhere? Uh, nope, I just have this all off the top of my head. But when I have something written down, so for instance, what I do is I, of course, trade it, created a training portal for my team to plug into. And I have all the activity that they would need to do. So how do you sponsor? Let's, let's talk about that. So bringing people into your business. We, we talk about this as a grand term of go out and share the business with someone. Just go do it and do it a lot because it's all about quantity. You got to share it with more people so the few will say yes, right? You probably heard that before. Anyone get your system. So, so it's not a matter of getting my system. So for instance, when you look at my system, I don't know what business you're in. It's, it's about making sure that you wrap a system around the core activities that grow your business. And that's something that, of course, depending on which business you're in, you have to develop. So this is where I want you guys to get those brainstorms and those ideas of what would you be doing. So the thing is, let's talk about sponsoring. So sponsoring is a big, big, uh, action item, but let's break it down. When you're looking at sponsoring, and by the way, the book I always give my new reps 
when they move up in their first rank level in their business is a great book to follow if you have no clue on how to share the business with someone. And I agree with this guy's book, but I don't follow it 100% because I feel a lot of the techniques are very old school network marketing. And I'm not an old school network marketer. I'm, I'm big in a different way of relationship marketing. So I agree with some of the concepts, but not all, but it's a good foundation. So do you see where we're going with this again? And that's Eric Worre's book, E-R, let me get it. So I did talk about this book. Um, it's right here. So see how you spell his name? It's called GoPro. So I did talk about this book and, and the top 10 books that I recommend for business owners. The um, I again agree with this book and it's funny because I was training this style of sharing the business with people. I call it the five point quick chat. And then all the people that were training with me were going, oh my gosh, this guy, Eric has a book out and it's exactly what you're teaching. He probably stole it from you. I'm like, what? And so I went and, and obviously not because he's a famous network marketer, but that's the thing. Remember what I said in my secret before? Everything's been done. It's just different people's interpretation. So it's it's not rocket science. Where did I come up with it? The where I came up with my five point quick, quick chat is just what what do I know about human nature and what people hate and what do I hate? And that's the reason why I shared it that way. So this was a good step to go if you don't know how to sponsor. And again, just so you can see it without the light glaring it out. Okay. So if we look at sponsoring, it's not just teaching someone a foundation of, here, this is what you do to go sponsor. Write down a name of, of, of people's names on a list. And now step two, go talk to them about the business. And then step three, follow up with them. Well, that seems pretty logical for a system, isn't it? Wrong. There's a lot missing there because give that to someone who's brand new on the job trying to find the toilet that day. They, they're they like, share the business with them. What do I say? I don't even know. What video do I share with them? Do I do a PowerPoint? Do I go at their house at dinner and sit with a flip chart? What do I do? People don't know. So honestly, as silly as it sometimes sounds to you or, oh my gosh, I can't believe people don't know this stuff. This is like so easy do it because there's a lot of people who just don't have time to think. And if you just make the simple, simple ABC, easy as one, two, three, they will do it. So I'm big into Michael Jackson again right now. Do you know? <laughs> Cause I thought it was time that my daughter learn about Michael Jackson, the King of pop and the King of rock. She had to learn them both cause Nana in heaven loved the King of, of rock. And me, I love the King of Pop. So I was like, she better learn. And she's six. And she's obsessed with Michael Jackson right now. So everything Michael Jackson, she she watches. So that's what you have to think about. So if you can't just tell them, go tell people about the business. You have to walk it out for them. So the more that you can have a paint by numbers checklist, like Melissa said earlier, to point someone through and even give them templates that's going to make their life so much easier that they will do it. At two in the morning, they will do an action. So let's go into sponsoring. Let's dive a little bit deeper into it. Okay, so we now know we got to share the business with someone. So let's break down those steps even more and create checklists for every part of it. You might want to give sample scripts. I am not a script fan person. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because I can't stand it. People who are scared will read it. No matter how many times you tell them, don't read it, they will read it. So to give you an example, again, sorry, you have to keep making this reference, but this was my life for 11 years. For that APD manual, the Area Promotions Manual that we made for the presenters that were working for Shaleen, these guys were freaked out to go do their first certification because they get, they're booking these events and now they're going for the first time ever to go speak for 10 straight hours in front of people just staring at them like this. That's all they did. And you have to be this monkey entertainer up there to keep them awake. 
And so these presenters were freaking nervous to do that. So what we did was we did write out a, a word for word script for the whole day on what they would do. Remember Blassie? Blassie uh, used to work with as a presenter for us. So that's why Blassie and I are connected, of course. But the, the script was written out word for word. And in our training camp, we would tell them, okay, so here it is. You're going to go practice one of the sections and then uh, prepare it for us and actually do the lecture for us later. But we do not want you to memorize the script. Everybody went back to their hotel rooms and they read the thing. They tried to remember their section of what they were going to say. And then the next day when they stood in front of Shalene, myself, and maybe one or two of the other corporate people that worked for the company, and we're sitting there at a desk watching them speak so we can give them critique, you know what they did? They read it script for script. Like they like memorized the script. And we're like, oh, that's just not good. You don't ever want to memorize something as a script. Everything's a guideline. So everything is a guideline. That is going to be able to help you. Is you can have a script for them, but I don't suggest it. I suggest give them bullet points. And that's what my five point quick chat teaches is giving them a roadmap of how to effectively share the business. So if you're looking at that whole sense of how to sponsor, well, they need to be able to get a list. So why don't you create the template of here, fill in the blank of list of people that you could um, put information for. Now the next step, tell them what they do next. It's not just get out there. Get out there, start talking to people. That's not the next step. That's not. The next step is telling them how to actually fit this in their schedule. So that's the next step. So do you see how I'm breaking it down? It's not just a matter of get out there and do it. You gotta actually look up, you're walking through the pace of it all. So for me to write down a list of names, okay, good. I got a list of people that I wanna talk to. Now what? Cause that's always what they're thinking. Now what? Now what is it's tomorrow. Now what? Do I just start calling them all one by one and fill my whole day? No, I don't do that. You want to pick off the people that you're going to call for that week and you look at your calendar and you start depositing in the calendar of your free time, your drive time, all the time that you can, who you're going to call at certain times throughout your scheduled week. You fill in the holes of your time with the people that you're going to call. That's what you do. Now it's time to call them. But I've got a different step process, which I can teach at a different time. But basically, you need to line up that you're going to be calling them. And then when you call them, guess what you got to give your new rep? A guideline to what they're going to say on the call. So don't just say, tell them about the business and how fun and exciting it is. Because who cares? Your business is not fun and exciting to you. And who cares about Mary Brown, who makes a million dollars, and Joe Smith, who's driving a Lexus, and so-and-so who just bought a yacht. They don't know those people. Who cares? Who cares about other people's success? People are always interested in themselves, and they want to know, well, what's it going to do for me? How is it going to change my life? So what you have to give your new rep is the call format. How do they run the call? Write that out in a system. How do they end the call? Everything has to be a system. Next, it's time to follow up. Write out a system teaching them how to follow up. Not just follow up and see what they said. No, there's a system to it. Because if you just randomly say, hey, you know, get back to me when you're done checking out the business, they're not calling you back. You gotta set up a system with that person. You gotta set an appointment, and then when you get them on the phone again, you have to say things a certain way. And it's up to you to be able to plug people into those systems that will align them. So hopefully this is all making sense. That's just one baby part of it all. So when you're looking at your business, I just went through one little tiny part that you have multiple systems you just now need to set up. Now, pick another chunk of your business and what you do for that. Break that down and set up the system. So chop it up. You got to start being a chef. And if you do that on the core activity and you just keep building it and building it and building it, eventually you're going to have your APD manual that people can plug in at two in the morning and know what to do. So that's, that's going to be key. One big um, advice that I did is I like to make videos to train. 
So for instance, I, I use Kajabi portal and I like to put all of my training in there so that people, apparently we're getting visitors. My door is open 24 seven. I got, I got a client buying product coming up to the door apparently. So the thing is, is that I like to have video training because obviously you guys are connected. It's just easier because you get to know someone better. And I, since I can't be physically with my team. I need them to get to know me as much as possible. And me just writing emails is cold. Me calling them is cold. So I need them to have video and connect with, connect with me and see how I talk and how I animate and all of that type of stuff. So I make videos. This is a trick for those of you who struggle. And I'm going to speak to the ladies because you guys, sorry, you just got like easy hair, like easy hair and easy face and easy t-shirt and you can make a video. So it's not fair. So the thing with women, we have to kind of get ready. Ready. And it really sucks. So that's like with this Periscope thing, kind of getting ready all the time is not fun for me, but I need to be here for you guys. So I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, is what I did one day, I had to go get my headshots taken because of our yearly achievement. We have to always submit a headshot to the company. So I had my hairstylist come to the house and she blew out my hair and did it all my style that I love. And then I went and got my headshots taken with my um, girlfriend in the neighborhood. We did it over her house. And then I was like, okay, hair and makeup is done. I'm going to go get my new passport picture because it was expiring. So I went down and got a new passport picture. And then I came home. And from 9 at night till 2 in the morning, I filmed 40 videos. And I just kept changing my shirt and my earrings. That's what I did. I kind of kept the same hair. But the thing is, is I was able to create... The, all the content, a lot of the content by one hairdo. That's what you should do. If you're creating content, just change your clothes. You don't have to, but sometimes it's better if you just have different outfits. So I'll just do like three videos and one shirt and then I'll switch up the environment and a different shirt. And I did that. And so you can write down all the videos that you want to do. So for instance, if you guys are like, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever to create all these systems. No, it's not. Pick the core activity that actually makes people money in the business. That actually makes people money in the business. Break it down and write it out. And with you writing out what you're going to say in the videos, training or whatever it is, don't write it all out. Just put your bullet points of training and then pick a day and film multiple ones all at once. And then you pick another day, film more. Hopefully this is making sense. How do you guys feel? We, that's pretty much what I got for you. And hopefully that makes sense. But that is cornerstone of my business. So core is more content. Perfect. And then the other, I don't, what's IPA? I don't know what that means. Um, you can outsource and have someone edit it too. If you can do that, go and get it outsourced so that you can do that. Name of video service you use again. It's called Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I. It is quite expensive. So if you are a new entrepreneur and you're trying to watch where your money goes, just put it in a private YouTube list right now. You could do that. Or um, I think you could put a private WordPress membership site so you can do that. Just try to be smart about where you're spending money, of course, in the beginning. How can we see my system? Um, for training my team, uh, you can only see it if you are part of my organization. So if you are, then you would be on my website. Are your videos available to watch? Yeah, I have a ton of free training content on youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer. And I put all my periscopes over there as well. But when things are very specific to my team and the growth of exactly the activity that they're going to do, that, of course, I keep in a, a separate training portal for them. It's a membership site that they would have to be a part of. So for, for my personal team, the ones who are directly working with me, I have a separate training portal for them because I'm speaking directly to them. I'm telling them, call me and tell me this. I can't have that for my organization. So my organization with the network marketing company that I'm in, I have the largest organization in the whole company. I have over 160,000 people in my downline. I can't have 160,000 people saying, okay, so you said Christine to call you. So I've got, this is my philosophy. I'll tell you my philosophy. My philosophy is if someone is choosing me to be their mentor to get started in the business, I give them my blood, sweat, and tears. So everything I ever create, every template, everything, every process of my business, I give that right over to them. And I keep that in a separate training portal for them. And I speak directly to them. 
for everyone else, like in my downline and organization, I give my sweat and tears. I will teach you how to do everything, but I'm not giving you all the unique little details because then why does someone need to work with me directly if I give everyone everything? So I will teach you it all, but come on, do some of the work. Plus, a lot of the stuff is specific to them reporting back to me. So that's the other side of it all. Oh, you didn't know I existed. <laughs> I know. I That's my biggest advice is if you are deciding to get into network marketing, do your research. I just had another phone call with someone today who's going to be joining with me. And she told me all the research she did. And I'm like, I am so proud of you. Thank you for doing that. Because I, I get emails, messages from people every day begging for me to take them under their wing because... The, they didn't know any better or they signed up or that person did a bait and switch and uh, like left them. So it's just a matter of finding the person that fits you right. But you know what? It comes right down to it. You heard me say it in the beginning. I don't have a coach. I don't have someone to mentor me specifically in this business at all. Even though I still call Shalene Johnson my mentor, she's not, she hasn't personally mentored me since I last worked for her company. So that's the thing is I follow her just like you guys do. I learn from Shalene the exact same way you guys learn from her. I've got a small little benefit that I can text her and ask her a quick question here and there, but I don't overwhelm her, of course, because I know her life and I know that she puts her stuff out there. So if I'm going to bother her with personal questions that I know she's done trainings on, that's stupid of me. And I know she hates people like that. She really likes people who go and do the work. I know she, she gives up of herself so much. So that's something to think about is you don't need someone specifically to make you successful or to mentor you or hold your hand. There's a lot of training out here. You know what to do. It's just follow through and do it. So hopefully that makes sense. And you give it to us. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. If you find the right people, you're going to get a lot of training and information. Um, you got to own it. That's a, that's the case. It's Again, you can get all the steps. You can get exactly the steps you're going to do in your business, but it's a matter of you following through and doing it. Um, you should go back and check out the Platinum Presenter site because there's I launched the brand new training portal for everybody in my organization that launched this week. So you can, of course, get inside that. Oh, I say a lot. I know a lot of people think that I don't actually mentor and sign up people because I have achieved success in this, but this is a constant new flow. I mean, you're constantly grooming new people to be successful in their own right. They're not always like on you. So you're always bringing in new people so that it's like being a, a kindergarten teacher. You have your kindergarten class for the year, but then they move up and you always get new people coming in. So that's always the case. You always got new people coming in. Hopefully that makes sense. But no, I do um, take on new coaches as well. Um, and if you want to know what my business actually is, go to livefitoutloud.com. So live fit out loud. All right. I got to go. I got to go sit on the couch and drink a glass of wine. All right. Thanks guys. I will see you tomorrow. And if not, catch the replay, youtube.com slash Christine Dwyer. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.